What we wanted to do is we wanted to use the opportunity of technology to be able to allow the, the kidney doctors to be able to look at the patient's records with the patient's consent so that when you wanted a renal opinion, you weren't having to write letters, wait for them to get the, the renal physicians, for them to review what you've given them and realise it was the wrong stuff. The, the far clever way of doing things is, is when you did a referral with the patient's consent, the renal doctors could look at, and the renal team could look at the whole patient record, see your question, understand more what was going on, and then give some tailored bespoke advice, one of the options of which is a virtual clinic. I think it was understanding what other models there had been. So in Camden, they'd set up a service not dissimilar to the one we were looking to do. East London were talking about doing something similar. So it was going to look and see what, what might have worked in other places. So you don't want to reinvent the wheel, you in fact just want to take the wheel and make it a bit better. Okay, so we started work in 2011 and what we did initially was uh, look at the number of people that we could offer non-face-to-face -face care within the standard diabetes clinic, look at the demographics and broadband usage among our patients. And then we got a small pot of money from the Health Foundation as part of their Shine Award. And that was really to look at the scope and feasibility of offering non-face-to-face -face care within the standard outpatient diabetes clinic. And at the end of the first year, we came to realise for this model to be really effective, we needed to fundamentally change the outpatient process so that um, non-face-to-face care using video follow-up was part of changes to the wider outpatient pathway. I think that um, collaborative working was really important to this scheme. And it can be really quite tricky to do and quite uncomfortable at times because you're all moving at different paces. And I think that collaborative work is really helped by making sure you've got enough time for face-to-face -face meetings and not trying to do this kind of thing by email. Alongside that, in negotiating um, changes to a service, it's really important that everybody's a winner. So that there are wins for the clinicians. So for us, there were obvious wins for clinicians in that GPs had uh, a much shorter wait time to get um, clinical answers. And for the nephrology department and for management, their win was that there'd be far fewer attendances. And so a scheme like that that's, that appears to be winning for everybody, it's quite easy to get it through. The key stakeholders need to be fully engaged. You need a, a superb coordination but that needs to be a clinical coordination with a nurse specialist who can actually action your um, what we had discussed and was part of the team. Um, so that was extremely important. It was also important that we had IT uh, support and that the clinics were documented, they were on the system, they were outcomed so that we all knew what had happened uh, and patients could then followed up. One of the things he said right at the beginning is we've got to get the IT right. And in fact, the, there were a lot of the other factors I've said that all clicked into place, the commissioners, the secondary care, the management at the Royal Free and the community services. IT all the way along was quite tricky. Um, in Islington, the IT is if you like, out resourced to other people. And that, that was a challenge. So we'd have meetings, the clinicians would work out what made sense, and then trying to get the IT team to understand and to help with that. So I think it's always work in progress because it's a relatively new model of care. So it's really important that you start small, test small, do some PDSA cycles, uh, learn from mistakes, um, don't be scared to fail, learn from mistakes, refine the process as you go along. Um, have a, a, a close working group with key stakeholders and then make sure you report very widely uh, to the wider stakeholder group um, so people are constantly able to look at progress and advice and help and support along the way.